The Philippines is known to have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Lined with white sandy beaches and crystal clear waters, it is obvious why so many tourists flock the Philippines' infamous beaches. We know of Paracay and El Nino, but what about the lesser known Philippine islands, where the beaches are just as good, if not even better? Balabak, Philippines has been gaining so much popularity online. Its crystal clear waters and fine white sand can be seen all over social media. But where is Balabak, Philippines? For most of us, it is a place we have never even heard of. Located miles away from the main island of Palawan, Balabak, Philippines is actually closer to Malaysia than it is to Puerto Princesa. It is a secluded group of islands where access is not as easy. So how do we get here? We are Eds and Joyce. Together with our baby Milka, we travel the world one beautiful destination at a time in constant search for our next adventure. There's turquoise waters. It's so calm. You feel like you're the only person in the world when you're here. Wow. Ta-da! Hello! So our past couple of videos, we were in the most beautiful place that we have ever visited. And that is Balabak Islands in the Philippines. So Balabak Islands has recently been gaining so much popularity on social media because it is home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the Philippines. Balabak is also arguably home to the most beautiful islands in the world. So in the past couple of episodes, we showed you some of the most beautiful islands that Balabak has to offer. And these islands are Canimaran Island, which has pinkish white sand and crystal clear turquoise water, Tangkahan Island, which has some of the most complete amenities in the vicinity, Patawan Island, a humble island that fully embodies the magic of tropical life. Onok Island, arguably the most popular island in the Balabak area. And Starfish Sandbar, the dreamiest place that we have ever visited. And honestly, these videos don't even do this place justice. It's just so magical and it's just one of those places that you have to see to believe. And it's no wonder that Balabak's popularity on social media only continues to grow. So where is Balabak, Palawan? So Balabak is a municipality in Palawan in the extreme most southern west tip of the Philippines. It's located 30 kilometers away from the southwest tip of Palawan and is only about 50 kilometers away from Sabah, Malaysia. Part of the beauty of Balabak lies in the fact that it's very remote. That being said, the Balabak Islands is still not as accessible as the other areas in Palawan, like El Nido. So how did we get here? To get to Balabak, you first need to go to Bataraza, which is located in the southern tip of Palawan Island. It is roughly around 300 kilometers away from Puerto Princesa, so by van it should take around 5 or so hours. You then need to hop on a 3-hour boat ride before you can reach the islands. So one of the ways that you can go to Balabak is by taking a 5-hour um, van ride na shared going to Bataraza. So we made it to the Bolivian port and now we are just looking for our boat. The first thing that we need to do here is go to the tourism office. So we're here at Bolivian port and it's around like 8 o'clock in the morning. We got here, I think, on a 7.45 after roughly a five and a half hour ride. So the van kept stopping because it was going to be a lot of But we didn't really mind it because we were asleep the entire ride anyway. Uh, now we're just waiting for our boat to pick us up. I think it's going to get here at around 10, but I'm not sure. At least it gives us time to buy lunch and other stuff. So that's good. So our boat is finally here. Yay! So excited. <laughs> Yay! 
so this is our boat for the day. <laughs> ready? Ready, I'm yes, super ready. We're going to Monaco! So yes, there is a lot of travel involved in going to Balaba. Aside from the travel, there are very few options for accommodation and dining. So what are the ways to enjoy Balabak Islands? The easiest way is to book a tour package. There are so many packages available so there are many options to choose from. The upside, everything is taken care of for you including accommodations and food. The downside, you rarely get to choose the islands you visit, especially if you're part of a big group. The cheapest way is to book by Kluk. If you look at Kluk, you will see offers for the Balabak Islands. Yes, they will be cheaper, but there's no guarantee that you get to visit the island listed due to environmental factors. Yeah. Organizer na may tour A, B, C, D, hindi yung mangyayari yung in case, mo? in case ho na magkaroon ng halimbawa typhoon, syempre mababago po yun. Yeah, I'm sure. Tapos I'm sure. Tapos pag magkaroon pa ng conflict yung tides, hindi yung mangyayari yun. Kasi halimbawa sabihin natin, eh, first tour niya A is ano, uh, itong unok, tapos low tide pala ng umaga. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede yun. Oh, no, no. Kailangan magda-divert siya. Yeah. So this island is just so so beautiful, but it's time to say goodbye because bumababa na yung water. It's currently low tide, which means if we don't leave now, what's the stock kami dito? I don't think that's such a bad thing, but hmm. <laughs> it's actually not a bad thing. I'd, I'd get stuck here anytime. Kaya hindi rin pwede yung suggestion na ano na ABC hindi natin. Maganda sana. Actually, maganda sana kung meron, pero kung yung weather naman. It's important to note that Balabak is in the middle of the sea, so weather plays a big factor in your adventures. What we did is what some would call DIY. We got a private boat and we got to choose our islands. However, this does not include accommodations and food, both of which have very few options in the island. So we ended up in JD Lodge, which has clean rooms, a private bathroom, and a very, very cold air con. So currently, we're on our way to our lodge. So we are in Katie's Lodge, and this is our room. Wow, it's actually quite spacious. The AC on the main, oh my god. And we have, we have our own CR. Oh, 
Darwin and the Chinese The food was a little bit more challenging because there are no restaurants in the island of Palapa. For us, we ended up eating a lot of junk food because that's all we had. So what we learned is that Balabak prices are completely justifiable. They are more expensive than some of the other destinations in the Philippines, but this is because they are so remote and access to goods is very hard to come by in this area. Will we come back? Definitely. Oh my god, ang ganda dito. Ang ganda dito. I said, I really want to go back here sometime soon. So, ang ganda ganda. I love it. What would we do differently? So next time we visit, I would like to stay in one of the smaller islands like Patawan Island instead of the main island of Balabang. I definitely take back anything I said about all the islands here being the same. It's definitely not. <laughs> I love this island. It's so small, it's so cute, and I could easily spend an entire day here. Next time I come here, I would really consider staying here in Patawan Island or at least spend like just an entire day here. It's so nice. I love it. I love it so much. I would like to visit a maximum of two islands. Not only that it will save you a lot on entrance fees, but you get to enjoy more time on the island that you like. I like this one. This is really nice. This place is really nice. But I still stand by what I said earlier that it's better to have like one or two island stops per day. So if there's any of you who's like us and prefer taking things slow and you know the saying that less is more? Like the less islands you visit, the more you appreciate everything. Yeah, that's kind of my vibe. <laughs> I love it. And grab it, it's only 10.30 a.m. and I feel like we've done so much already. That's the thing about waking up so early. We just need a few minutes to like regroup ourselves, you know, maybe have a meal here. I don't know. The early call time is really in a throw off because we woke up at two and then I feel like we're lacking sleep, but we're also rested at the same time. I think it's just, not being used to yung ganong kaagang all the time and, you know, dire direcho ba ba? It is currently 12 p.m. and we haven't eaten since we were up at 2. So, gutom na talaga kami. <laughs> we actually have food na binili namin din sa port. So, kasi what we got is yung tour na without the food para it's a little bit cheaper. But maganda rin yung food na nakuha namin. It's really good too. Solid. So Ed's just got all of his food at the port and it really doesn't look like much but with this view, it feels like a top-notch lunch. <laughs> I realize now that I like it better na to just stay in one island for the whole day. It's better. So if you really like an island from the place that you've been to, we suggest you just stay there for the day. Kasi pare-parehas lang naman eh, pero it's just the vibe. Iba lang yung vibe. Pero when it comes to the beach, lahat sila maganda. One reality pala of island hopping also is nakapagod siya kapag masyado maraming islands, yes. But also, remember, the more islands you visit, the more entrance fees you have to pay. Diba? Imagine a surprise coming in the entrance fees there. It is per head and we did not expect it to be that much per island. And if you're expecting to be able to do balabak for cheap, the chances are you're not gonna be able to do it. Kasi malayo talaga yung islands, you guys. So you really do have to pay for the transportation, for everything. And then the islands, each of the islands has their own entrance fees. At so, least at least 200 per head. per head. So 
what I'm saying is there are cheaper ways to do this, but the cheaper options are still not cheap. Alam mo yan? I hope that makes sense. So make sure that if you guys are going to do DIY, you also check the islands that you want to visit so that you can save up on entrance fees. Because they are going to cost you. So that's it. We hope that this helps in planning your trip to the Philippines' most beautiful islands. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!